What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've got a little bit different video for you. Uh, a coworker of mine brought this 2015 Jeep Compass to me. Uh, it had a, an O2 sensor circuit error uh, that he wanted me to go ahead and look into. He had AutoZone check in, that's obviously all they can give him because they just tell him the codes and possible causes. So I'm gonna deep a little dive, or dive a little deeper into it uh, with the Foxwell NT644 Elite that I reviewed in a previous video. Uh, see what kind of live data we can get from it. See if there actually is an O2 sensor fault um, Originally the car had been brought to me for a transmission and needed a transmission Because the input shaft bearing that's notoriously or notorious for going bad on these needed um, Or actually went bad enough that it actually galled the case so it actually needed an entire transmission because It was cheaper than replacing the case half so um, having the battery out of this car while I was doing the transmission, uh, I actually cleared the code for the O2 sensor, um, but I'm gonna see if I can read the live data uh, to see if there's any uh, still traces of why it would have tripped that circuit. So this will be perfect for doing it, but we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just plug it in. So you just find your car's OBD2 port, which happens to be right under the dash. Um, it's usually, I believe it's 12 inches from the center line of steering wheels where it's supposed to be. Um, and then as soon as you plug it in and you power the car on, the box wall will turn on right there. Um, we do have a few different options here. We have auto VIN. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try that and see if it works with this car. So I'm going to go ahead and key on, but don't start it. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the auto VIN acquisition. Um, if that doesn't work, there's manually input VIN directly under it that you can use. So we're gonna go ahead and do the automatic bin and see what it does. This might take, actually it did it pretty much right away, so that's awesome. So hit F3 for yes, because it gave us a bin number. And then it is gonna go ahead and do a bunch of system checks and stuff like that um, to verify all the different modules and stuff in the car. So it gives the model year, uh, what body it is, so for the Jeep and Compass, it's an Apple K, um, along with the model type. It could be a Compass or a Patriot, this Eric Zumbler platform, and the VIN number below that. So once you click OK on that, which is F1 in this screen, uh, it gives you two options, quick scan and control modules. We're going to go ahead and do quick scan just to see what trouble codes, if any, that there are. Um, it says it'll take a little while, so this will actually check all the systems in the vehicle. Um, if you have airbag lights, if you have... Uh, any body control module lights, anything like that, it will tell you uh, what fault codes it's, that are present. So it starts off with the power train control module and it's slowly gonna work down the list. And as it clears, it'll say pass no fault. So if there's no issues with it, it'll just read pass no fault. Um, if there is an issue, it'll, I believe, yeah, see there's one right here for the airbag occupant restraint system. It just says fault and then it has the number of faults present. Um, and then once it goes through this list, you can actually check which one, whichever one has fault codes present, you can go and scroll down to that, click OK, and then you can review what, what faults you have within the system. And it does it actually pretty quickly. I'm actually really impressed with how quickly this does this. But so once you're in this screen, you can click read code. So we have passenger occupant detector circuit high. So that's gonna be the passenger seat of this car. Uh, probably something to do with the occupant sensor that's in the in the bottom cushion of the seat um, We're not throwing a trouble code for it though, but it is nice to know that it's there um, Actually if we click on it again, we can do freeze frame see if it'll actually tell us so the so I'll have to look a little more into that. It says frequency counter 255, but it says operation cycle counter. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what those values are. Um, but like I said, it's not throwing a trouble code, so I'm not too worried about it. So let's go back to powertrain control module. We're gonna go ahead and click okay, since we're looking for the O2 sensor. That'll be part of the powertrain control module system. Once it loads. All right, so I've got the vehicle started, so if you can't hear me, I apologize. So we're gonna go ahead and read the codes now that it's in the powertrain control module. And we, it says system pass no fault found, so we're gonna click OK, which is F3 in this menu. We're gonna go down to live data. 
And again, this might take just a second. And again, having that battery unplugged for so long, it's gonna clear all these codes. So if they're not present when you put the battery back in, uh, it may take a couple uh, cycles of starting and stopping the vehicle and driving it to actually get that to uh, show up again. But so now that we are in the list of stuff right here, so we're gonna go ahead and find the oxygen sensor, which let's see where that is. So we've got O2 sensor goal, zero to one, volts zero to one, O2 sensor volts. So we've got our different values we wanna see for our uh, upstream and downstream O2 sensors. There's two of them on this vehicle since it's a four cylinder with one pipe and one catalytic converter. So we're gonna go ahead and check a couple of these just to see, so we're gonna hit one of one. So I'm assuming that's the upstream O2, we're gonna go ahead and hit, we're gonna check all these boxes for our O2 running values, just to see how many different values that it's actually registering. So, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay after all those boxes are checked, the little blue boxes on the side here. <coughs> and then we we'll hit okay, or actually F3 in this case again. So this will give you all your running values and what the units are. So these are all in voltage since it all runs off of electricity, obviously. So we've got O2 sensor level is bouncing between low and high and we're showing 0.61 volts there for the, for the goal. So you want it to have, to be at 0.61. So it actually gives you the value that you should be around. And then you can see what it's actually bouncing around at right here. So as I rev it, that value will change. As I give it gas, it should go a little higher, which means it's giving it more fuel. Um, and then we have the actual reference voltages right here. So it is, like I said, bouncing between low and high. So that could be that it's not quite warmed up yet. So it's actually in a closed or open, or sorry, closed loop meaning it hasn't gone to a predetermined, predetermined or it's in a predetermined map, it's not accepting the learning values just yet. So actually you can see it's closed loop, so it is, yeah, so it's listed right there as a closed loop. So uh, once it warms up, it should go to open loop. Uh, it's not quite there yet, but it is pretty close. But as we scroll down these, we can actually see the, uh, the pulse width, the heater temp, which it says for both of them, they're about 700 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. Um, so this actually gives us our goal value of, Okay, so here we should, we can go to a graph so we can actually see our goal value versus our actual value. Uh, so in this case, if you scroll over one or the other, uh, it'll pop up graph F2, so you hit F2. It'll give you, this is just the goal value, so it's gonna hold steady at 0.65, but if you push F2 for multigraphs down here, it will give you what it should be, which we know that's 0.65, then also real time. So you can see it's kind of bouncing up and down. So that's actually the computer trying to compensate as it's idling. So as long as that average is around the 0.65, which is bouncing from anywhere from zero to 0 0.86, it looks like. And then steadily doing that back and forth. To me, the first O2 sensor is not having very much of a fault issue if at all um, because it is coming below that goal value so it should be good there so we're going to go ahead and check the post 
Cat 02, which is on here, it's 1-2, uh, or 1-2, slash two, so we should be able to go to here, and then we're going to hit Graph again. So as you can see, it's trending very similarly. Uh, the goal should be pretty similar, uh, especially right now since it's still in a closed loop. Um, but as you can see, it's only going from 0 to like 0.76, so it's reading about the same. And to me, that shows that there's not really a fault in this system. So I'm not really sure what the code for the O2 sensor was since it was cleared. I should have checked it beforehand, but I didn't have a chance to. But the actual graphs uh, show me that the running values are pretty average. If this was, if one of these was hanging up pretty high and never coming down below a certain value, um, or is staying above the goal value, then uh, it would represent like a lean condition that's probably not there, uh, which means the voltage is off, uh, which would mean the O2 sensor itself is dead. So like I said, I'm not sure what is actually going on with this. If it comes back, I'll have uh, my coworker bring it back to me and I'll scan it again and check and see. Um. All right, so that's all I've got for you today, unfortunately. Uh, but I do have a bunch of parts for the E36. Uh, since the weather's getting warmer, I'll have a few more things that I can do because the weather's getting nicer outside, so I'll be able to pull the car outside and do all the work outside. But I do have a bunch of interior parts of this. Uh, if you've seen the inside of the car, you know there's no door panel on this door. Typically E36 problems. The one on the other side is pretty much roached. And then also I've got two new seats and a bunch of other goodies in, for the interior to finish up in here as long as wiring, or as well as wiring the gauges in. So I've got a bunch of stuff for that. I've also got in this box right here, uh, a bunch of stuff for my daily driver E61. Uh, it's got an M5 front bumper on it right now, but the bumper uh, met a curb and destroyed itself. So I've got a brand new one in the box I'll be painting uh, at some point uh, when I get a minute and I've got the paint and the weather's nice because here in Michigan it's pretty gross most of the time in the spring especially so but stay tuned like I said I've got a bunch of stuff for this my E61 will be making its debut on the channel and again we've got the wing also that needs body worked and installed so we'll have that in a couple upcoming videos so stay tuned and thanks for watching we'll see you next time